go there. So my question, Mr. President, what are you so afraid of? Breaking news, live events. This is the moment. <laughs> Streaming straight to you, anytime, anywhere. You just met one friend right here. You're watching ABC News Live. Thanks for streaming with us. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kira Phillips. Thanks so much for streaming with us. As our special coverage continues here on ABC News Live, a live look now at the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv as Russian forces approach the city. Here's what we know. Celebrations to mark Black History Month. He will be joined by the vice president, black members of the historically diverse cabinet, members of the Congressional Black Caucus, state and local elected officials, civil rights leaders, and Divine Nine leadership. On Tuesday, as you are all tracking, the president will deliver his first State of the Union address. We'll have more of his address to preview uh, in the coming days. Uh, on Wednesday, the president and the first lady will travel to Superior, Wisconsin, to discuss how the bipartisan infrastructure law delivers for the American people by rebuilding roads and bridges and creating good paying union jobs. And on Thursday, the president will hold a cabinet meeting. With that, Steve, why don't you kick us off? Thank you. Uh, the EU earlier today agreed to hold. Uh, so we place uh, sanctions and asset freezes on Russian President Vladimir Putin and, uh, and the Russian Foreign Minister is the United States going to policy. Following a, a telephone conversation, a President Biden held with uh, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, and in alignment with the decision by our European allies, the United States will join them in sanctioning President Putin and Foreign Minister Lavrov and members of the Russian national security team. I expect we'll have more specific details out later this afternoon. Okay, um, and Bishop, can you detail the level of support the United States government is currently providing operationally to the Ukrainian military and intelligence services as they try to fend off the Russian invasion? Is the U.S. continuing to send uh, weaponry into Ukraine? Is it providing intelligence on, on Russian movements and, and tactical communications and the like? Well, without getting into too many specific details uh, that are sensitive for a range of reasons. Uh, we are continuing to deliver on the security assistance package that was announced uh, earlier last fall. All of that has not been delivered yet. We're continuing to provide that assistance. Obviously, we are uh, rem we remain in very close touch, of course, with uh, with President Zelensky. I think you may have just seen the readout that we just put out that included the president spoke with him earlier today again, and we are in very close touch from our national security team with members of his team as well. Uh, and we continue to uh, to uh, consider a range of options to provide additional assistance. And, uh, president Zelensky last night said he was uh, party number one uh, of the Russian military. Does the United States uh, sort of have a warning to Russia in the event that, you know, that they were to target uh, the Ukrainian president or uh, to capture him or, or to uh, physically harm him? Do we have a warning to them? Yes, well, specifically regarding that statement. Well, let me first uh, say that we have been uh, warning for months uh, that, uh, uh, for weeks if not months, that Kyiv falling, that attempts to overturn the leadership of Ukraine is very much uh, in the aspirations of President Putin. Uh, so his their attempts to do exactly that and their uh, continued uh, progress in moving toward Kyiv and moving toward Ukrainian leadership is aligned with what we have predicted. Uh, obviously, going after the head of state uh, would be a significant, um, uh, horrific uh, act uh, by uh, Russian leadership, but we remain in contact, as you uh, all have seen, from the readout we provided with President Zelensky. He's made clear that he's still in Ukraine, proudly and courageously standing up in the face of the Russian attack. Uh, and we are certainly continue to be cons uh, concerned about uh, the ongoing uh, Russian assault on the Just country. Topic, uh, the Center for Disease Control Protection uh, right now is announcing new uh, federal mask guidelines uh, that, uh, including under them, 70% or so of Americans right now live in areas where they are no longer recommended to wear masks indoors in public settings. Is that uh, guidance that will be followed here in the White House? Washington, D.C. is now not in there recommended anymore for, for wearing masks. Sure. Well, we are evaluating our protocols. Obviously, this guidance is just going out now as we speak. I believe Dr. Walensky continues uh, to provide a briefing uh, call uh, with some of your colleagues uh, right now. D.C. currently has a mask mandate until March 1st. Uh, we've always followed the most stringent guidelines that has typically been the CDC, so we will plan to follow that. And in the meantime, we, we are evaluating our protocols here at the White House. Yes, and on, on President Zelensky, did, uh, in, the, in President Biden's phone call with him, did it come up uh, whether did President Biden bring up whether President Zelensky, he thinks he should leave the country or not? Uh, that, that, that is not. I don't have any additional details to provide. Uh, president Zelensky continues to serve as president of Ukraine. He continues to do that courageously in the face of attacks from Russian military. This was a call uh, for the president to reiterate our strong support for him, for the Ukrainian people, and to reiterate and condemn the actions of the Russians. And on sanctioning Putin and Lavrov, yesterday President Biden has said that that was on the table. What changed between yesterday and today? Well, it has been under consideration and on the table for some time, as you know. And uh, as I just conveyed, uh, the president's uh, strong view and, str and strong principle from the beginning of this conflict, and even before, I should say, has been to take actions and steps in alignment with our our European partners, and this is certainly evidence of that. Just finally on that one, what does sanctioning Putin himself do in this, the opinion of this administration? A lot of analysts have said that this is more of a symbolic vote than anything. Well, without getting into any specific details, I know you're not exactly asking me this, but sort of about financial assets, et cetera. I will leave that to others to speak to. Uh, certainly the United, uh, uh, the step uh, that we are doing in alignment uh, and in coordination with the Europeans just sends a clear message about uh, the, the strength of the opposition uh, to the actions uh, by President Putin and the direction uh, in his leadership of the Russian military. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, and continuing the questions on sanctions. Yep. Um, Today, we saw that the Italian government and the German government both expressed, they said very clearly that they would not veto uh, a move to remove Russia from the transaction system. Can you say a word about how quickly you think something like that would happen and whether you believe that that would be another... And we're going to take you from the White House uh, straight to the Pentagon, where both uh, press secretaries are briefing us all on the situation between Russia and Ukraine. Let's listen to John Kirby now. Uh, you know, we're not waiting on anything. As a matter of fact, quite the contrary. The, the secretary's uh, orders authorized by the president yesterday actually put a good chunk of troops coming from the states going to Europe so that they can be ready for just these kinds of needs. This would 
applications. How many troops are prepared to deploy orders now? Is it still 8,500? No, it's, it's north of that, and I've said that publicly before. It's several thousand more um, uh, north of the 8,500 that was originally put on prepare to deploy. Jen. John, President Zelensky has made a passionate appeal to the U.S. and NATO to set up a no-fly zone over Ukraine. They have fought, as you've said, uh, valiantly on the ground. Uh, Russia does not have air superiority right now. Why not set up that no-fly zone at Ukraine's request? Uh, I, look, that's a, a, a policy decision uh, at, the, at the nation state level. I, um, I, I haven't seen the request that President Zelensky has made. Um, I would just tell you— He said they've been set up in— Syria, where there are Russian warplanes, there it's been set up in the past. There's historical precedent for it. Why not uh, unite NATO, European nations, to set up a fly zone? I, I would just tell you that that, uh, that would have to be a discussion inside the alliance. The president has been very clear that U.S. troops will not be fighting in Ukraine, and that our focus is on helping them defend themselves, and we've done that, uh, and we're going to continue to look for ways to do that and to shore up our uh, our uh, NATO allies and our, our defenses uh, on uh, on NATO territory. How would you characterize the fighting in the last 36 hours in terms of the Ukrainian uh, fighting and what Russia's experienced? Well, you know, I'm a little loath to get into a blow-by-blow -blow here from the Pentagon podium uh, on operations that we're not involved in. Um, I would just tell you, broadly speaking, uh, that, uh, that we, we see clear indications that the Ukrainian armed forces are fighting back. And bravely defending their country. Um, and uh, we also see indications that uh, there have been measures of success in that regard, because, um, again, without getting into a blow-by-blow, blow, um, it's uh, not apparent to us that the, the, the Russians, uh, over the last 24 hours, have been able to execute their plans um, as, uh, as, as they deemed that they would. But it's a dynamic, fluid situation. It, it's, uh, uh, it wouldn't be responsible for us to, to talk about it in, uh, you know, in, in a predictive way right now. Um, and uh, and we're just we're gonna we're watching this as closely as we can. But, but they are fighting back. They are fighting for their country, and uh, and they're doing so bravely. But you're saying Russians are facing setbacks on the battlefield. From what you our understanding is that they have experienced some setbacks. Yes. Uh, let's go, uh, Megan. On the forces who have been put on alert and then activated. Earlier this month, it was eight thousand five hundred. Uh, the Pentagon has said since then that there were more people put on prepared to deploy orders. You also there, the Pentagon has also said that the 7,000 troops activated yesterday, some of them had been on that part of that original 8,500, some of them weren't. So my question is, how many troops total since the beginning of this month have been put on prepared to deploy orders, and how many are still on prepared to deploy orders after this activation yesterday? Uh, Megan, I don't have an exact figure for you. As I said, uh, it, it's been several thousand more in addition to the 8,500. Um, so uh, somewhere between 10 and 12,000 total um, have been put on pre prepared to deploy orders or, or accelerated. Some of them were already on PTDO. And we'd shorten that tether, for instance, in some cases from 10 to 5 days. Some of that number wasn't on heightened alert, and so we did put them on PTDO, prepared to deploy orders. It, it varies by unit and by capability. Um, and uh, I don't have an exact breakdown of, of what is going to be going as a part of this NATO response force package, because, again, we're still working our way through that requirement. Right. The question is who's on alert, who had been on alert, who is no longer on alert and is going I don't have, a, I don't have a, a specific right. list for you today. 10 and 12,000 have been the total amount who have been alerted. Roughly, roughly speaking. Is it safe to deduct 7,000 from that, roughly, to say that there are the remainder would, is still I, waiting? I, so, Again, we got to be careful here, Megan. Not not everybody that has been put on a heightened alert posture is earmarked for the NATO response force. Some of those units are simply that the secretary wanted to make sure they were more ready to go uh, in a unilateral capacity. Some may be uh, perfectly placed in being to be used for the VJTF. We'll have to see what what, what the requirements look like. Um, so it's it's not a it's not binary. It's not well. That's all. These troops are just designated uh, for NATO, and these troops are just designated for unilateral. Um, these units that. The president announced yesterday that 7,000, they could very well fit the bill for the NATO response force, um, and, uh, and and maybe they won't, and we'll have them uh, ready in a three-point stance in case we need them from uh, from from a unilateral perspective. So that's why I'm being very careful today, because it's uh, it's not either or. It, it's uh, it's a menu of options that are going to be available to national leaders. And again, what I can promise you is. As we get solidity on this and, and more specificity, you know, we'll we'll detail that for but you. It is safe to say there are several thousand more who are on some sort of heightened alert for Europe in general. It is safe to say that. One force it is safe to say that. Yeah, silly. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Um, I understand that uh, NATO uh, gave the order to prepare the, the troops. What would trigger NATO to uh, deploy them? Uh, would it be uh, Russian troops going to the west of Ukraine, or what kind of um, uh, threat would uh, trigger their uh, effective deployment? That, that really is a decision for the NAC to make, for the alliance to make. It would be a unilateral U.S. decision. Um, I think today's uh, approval of the defense plan and the activation itself, as I said, is historic. Uh, first time that they have been, uh, been so activated. Um, that's a big deal. Now, again, what does it look like? How many? And where does the alliance want to place them? All of that is still being worked out. And, it's, and, and so I, I can't honestly answer your questions about what, what the trigger is. Um, I think you can safely assume that, that uh, what has been triggered here is the activation. And the trigger for that has been this unlawful, uh, an, an unlawful invasion again by Russia into Ukraine. Yeah, Tess. John, uh, Secretary Stoltenberg also mentioned about providing um, defense 
particle support and also including the uh, air defense systems to, to Ukraine. Is there going to be any input from the United States, any type of air defense systems like Patriots or Advanced, advanced. What I would tell you is we're continuing to look for ways to support Ukraine to, to defend themselves. We have continued to do that, and uh, uh, and we're going to look uh, uh, to do that going forward. And we're very actively engaged in, in those efforts to, to help them better defend themselves through both lethal and non-lethal assistance. From the very get-go, I have not been detailing uh, for any of you uh, each and every package, each and every shipment, because I think you can understand, and it's particularly relevant now, that Ukraine is involved in a no-kidding invasion of their country, um, that we wouldn't want to put it out there in the public space, everything they're getting from the United States. So uh, we're going to continue to be judicious about how much detail we put out there. But we know they have self-defense needs. We're going to do the best we can to fill them. And what's more is other nations are, too. It's not just the United States. David. Without detailing, can you say, are you continuing to ship defense uh, equipment to Ukraine? We are. Uh, we are. We have. Let me put it this way, David. We, we have not. We're not talking about uh, the effort to help them defend themselves. We have not talked about the effort to provide security assistance in a, in a lethal and a non-lethal way in, in the past tense. I leave it at that. Jenny. <laughs> we're, we're continuing to provide ways for them to defend themselves. That's as far as I'm going to go. You're continuing to provide. We're continuing to provide. You're not just looking at ways to support. You are continuing to provide. It's not. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't trying to be funny. It's not past tense. It's not over. It's not done. We're continuing to look for ways to help them defend themselves. Jenny. Thank you, John. Um, I have two questions on Russia and South Korea. First question, Russia. As you know, Russia has warned that it will retaliate immediately if there is a foreign state uh, intervenes in Russia's movements. What is your comment? I follow up to the second question. What is my comment about? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Can you say it again? Warned that uh, it will retaliate immediately if uh, there is a foreign state intervenes in Russia's movements. Look, uh, we're. We're going to do everything that we need to do to defend our country. And as the president has said, we're going to do what we need to do to defend every inch of NATO territory. And we take those obligations seriously, both to the American people and to, um, the, uh, to our allies. I'll just leave it at that. At the same time, uh, second question, at the same time, Russia said if South Korea joined the sanctions along with the United States, it will not have the Korean Peninsula issues. How can you comment on this? Russia cannot have uh, you know, Korean Peninsula issues if South Korea Join sanctions along with the United States. They mean, well, South uh, Korea, you, know, you know that South Korea joined the sanctions. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we welcome that. We, we, Russia warning that if South Korea doing this, they will not have. Uh, we welcome. Peninsula. We welcome the comments made by our South Korean allies. We welcome uh, their willingness to impose sanctions on Russia, as so many other countries are doing. Um, and I think the message is very clear uh, that, one, that that Mr. Putin continues to isolate himself and and uh, and his people. By, by these reckless and unlawful actions. And so you, you're seeing out of South Korea what you're seeing so many other places in the world where countries are, uh, are making very clear, very demonstrably so, um, uh, their condemnation of, of this invasion of Ukraine. And again, uh, we, we welcome the, the contributions to that effort by South Korea. Okay, follow up. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Did you say the United States is looking for ways to defend, or is it that you are continuing to provide? Guys, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure why this has become such a rhetorical exercise. We continue uh, to prov provide for support for Ukraine to defend itself. The situation, right, is different in Ukraine than it was just a few days ago. So it would follow, I would think, that we're going, you know, that, uh, that we're, we're going to have to look for other ways to do this. The airspace over Ukraine is contested. The Russians don't have superiority of it. It's contested. Uh, so we are going, I'll be very clear here, we are going to provide additional security assistance for Ukraine. We will. How that is going to be done is still being worked out. Does that help? Okay. Good. Dan. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was looking for a Pentagon reaction today to, to the back and forth. Um, Finland came forward with some comments suggesting they may re-entertain. Who did? Finland. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Finland came forward uh, raising the, the prospect of reorienting toward NATO a little bit more. Uh, Russia responded uh, and basically made another veiled threat there. Do you anticipate from a Defense Department perspective any different kinds of conversations, any uh, renewed uh, discussions uh, that would bring Finland under NATO at any point? I'm not aware of any such discussions, Dan. Um, again, that would be for the alliance to speak to, not the United States. I would just say what we said before in the case of Ukraine. Uh, who a nation, a sovereign nation associates with, what alliances it joins, that's between that nation and that and the alliance. In this case, it would be between um, any country and NATO. Uh, and Mr. Putin doesn't get a veto over that. He doesn't get to decide unilaterally on his own what an independent sovereign state uh, uh, chooses to do with, with its association and the alliances that it wants to join. So I don't know of any renewed conversations uh, with respect to Finland, but again, that would really be between Finland and for the alliance to speak to, not the United States. Put another way, Ukraine was reorienting toward the West. They're paying dearly right now. Finland has raised similar prospects and are now also being threatened. 
is there any straight line here that we, we should be addressing uh, about threats on Finland and what that also would mean to Europe if there was a similar sort of operation on Finland? Well, certainly, uh, that would be extremely destabilizing. Um, and um, I, I don't, we don't have any indication that that's necessarily in the offing uh, in terms of actual conflict there. Um, and so I, I don't want to speculate about the prospects of that or what we would do if that happened. Um, I, I would just say that uh, uh, we are right now in, in a situation where um, Obviously, the security of Ukraine is being threatened, but, but European security writ large is being threatened. Uh, and you've seen the alliance step up in ways that, that, uh, that truly are historic um, and, uh, and significant, and I think you're going to continue to see that going forward. Um, if uh, the secretary said it best, I mean, Mr. Putin is getting exactly what he says he didn't want, a strong NATO on, on his western flank. And so without speaking to Finland specifically, uh, we, number one, stand up for sovereignty. Uh, and the territorial integrity of, of independent nation states, uh, that's not going to change. Um, and Mr. Putin, should he want to violate that in new ways, will find new costs, I'm sure, imposed upon him. Number two, our commitment to, to NATO is ironclad, and we're going to continue to look for ways to, to strengthen that. Okay. Uh, let me go to the phones here. Uh, Abraham. Uh, yeah. yeah, thanks so much for taking my call, John. Um, reports indicate that Kiev could fall in as little as a day. Is the Defense Department doing anything to prevent Kyiv from falling? And then I have a second question. I don't have a prediction about the, what's going to happen to, to, to Kyiv, uh, Abraham. And as I said, we continue to provide ways for Ukraine to defend itself, both from a lethal and a non-lethal perspective. Um, and the other thing I'd say to that is you can see for yourself uh, just an open press reporting what, you, what your colleagues are reporting from the region, that Ukraine is, is fighting back. Uh, they are defending themselves. And as I said uh, earlier to Jen, uh, we certainly have seen indications that uh, the Russians are not uh, in every case, making the progress that they thought they were going to make. What's your second question? Yeah, thanks. On, uh, any assessments about what Ukrainian air defenses remain intact? Thank you. Uh, I, I'm not going to get into a, a specific assessment about Ukrainian military capabilities. Um, a, we don't have perfect visibility. B, even if we did, I, I don't think putting that out in the public uh, when they're literally being uh, attacked by a, a neighboring state uh, is, uh, is a smart move for us to make. Dimitri? Thanks, John. A couple of questions. Uh, the first is whether you have any updates on the amphibious landing assault near uh, Mariupol. And secondly, some European intelligence officials say that... Pentagon spokesperson John Kirby briefing reporters there from the Pentagon on the Ukraine-Russia situation. Ukraine. Forces no, yes. making their way toward Kyiv from Belarus in the north and Crimea in the south using missiles and long-range artillery. Uh, the question did come from one of the reporters about uh, is Kyiv going to fall within the day? Reports are out there that that indeed was going to happen. John Kirby uh, saying that the U.S. is going to do whatever it needs to do to help Ukraine defend itself both lethal and in non-lethal ways. Elizabeth Schulze, uh, monitoring all this for us as well. You've been watching the White House briefing, also the Pentagon briefing. Elizabeth, a couple things to ask you. First of all, he didn't really want to say exactly how the U.S. was going to help Ukraine, but he did make the point they would do whatever they needed to do to help Ukraine not fall, uh, and and also stress the point that uh, Russia losing some momentum here on troop movements. Yeah, Kira, that's right. We heard from Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby that they don't want to give any specific predictions about will, what will happen to Kyiv, but that they are continuing to provide that assistance while still making that point that has been continued to be made from the administration. This does not mean U.S. troops will be going to Ukraine. This is something they are just repeating in these briefings. We hear from the president. We just heard it again. There is news from the Pentagon in that they are now activating the NATO response force. So this is the first time that the NATO response force has been activated in this sort of deterrence role that, you know, made a point of saying that this is a preventative, proportionate, and non-escalatory role. But this is a force of 40,000 troops from NATO essentially standing at the ready in case something, in case they need to respond. And this comes from the decision, we, the meeting we saw this morning from NATO ministers in Brussels. Really, the, the message from the Pentagon here is that we are standing by to provide any additional assistance to our NATO allies. We have now taken this step to activate this force. That shows that we expect that there could be further escalation as we're watching closely, of course, looking on the ground. Uh, as, as Kiev uh, closes in there, Akira. And also, Elizabeth, something we weren't sure of yesterday, and that was uh, sh sanctions against uh, Putin as an individual, not just his country. The question was asked yesterday when President Biden was addressing the nation. Uh, now, from what we understand, uh, Putin uh, will be sanctioned.